Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well. Yes, it's that time of the week again, where we go through what happened at PMQs with uh, James O'Brien and uh, LBC's political editor, Theo Usherwood, where it, he always has something really interesting to say, and um, he always picks up on little things you're always going to miss. And um, even though this week's probably a bit of a damp squib, he, uh, he sort of like picked up on something that I didn't want sure about. So enjoy. Theo Ashwood is still here. Yes, it was a bit. It, it was a bit of a. It was a bit of a damp squib that PMQs compared, but we kind of knew that it was going you to know, be. The, I like the. It's very odd for. Boris Johnson in his current situation to be trying to belittle lawyers in the House of Commons. <laughs> He's a lawyer and he a might, We're needing one soon. But actually, the, the, I, I sense Starmer knew what he was doing there. He's, he's, he's sort of getting ducks in a row. For exactly. A, and he started, with the ministerial, he started with the ministerial uh, code. And of course, there had been some pushback as to whether the ministerial code would be applied. Now, of course, just to remind listeners, if you knowingly mislead the House of Commons as a minister and you are found to have knowingly misled the House of Commons, then a ministerial code states that you should resign as a minister. And the two quotes, of course, you heard uh, from Keir Starmer, which were read out related to the Prime Minister's denials that there were any parties um, in Number 10 Downing Street. Yes. And... That's going to be very hard. <laughs> well, the, 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 what might save Boris Johnson if he has the political capital which he has not a huge amount of at the moment, mm. is the fact is the process. And the process, of course, Sue Gray doesn't rule on whether he has broken the ministerial code. Only one person can rule on whether he's broken the ministerial code, and that's Lord Guite, the independent advisor on ministerial standards. And the only person who can trigger an investigation by Lord Guite is... The Prime Minister. The Prime Minister. And the only person who can overrule Lord Guite is... The Prime Minister. Yes. And therefore, you, we could end up in a situation where... Lord Guy isn't even given the opportunity to investigate whether the ministerial code was broken. And it isn't for Sue Gray, despite her power across Whitehall that is told by co former colleagues and colleagues of hers, it isn't for her to decide whether Boris Johnson has broken the ministerial code. It's, it, it, yes, it's all pretty grim, isn't it? The idea of the Conservative Party's cheering as the Prime Minister is under police investigation. It's a, it, I mean, the, I know they have jobs to do and kids to feed, but one wonders how many of them are doing it with a very... Uh, Keir Stummer was quite telling... Clenched he, buttocks. When, when he said, <laughs> Don't, you'll be asked to defend this next... Yeah, uh, exactly. And to, and exactly. What we were talking about earlier with the, the the trying to drive a wedge between Boris Johnson um, and his own um, MPs, but as we were discussing before, Prime Minister's question started. We're in effect uh, in a uh, in a holding pattern. The Prime Minister saying, "Well, I need to wait for the investigation. I need to wait for the investigation to mm. conclude." And he also mentioned, of course, the uh, police investigation and used that as a defence on one occasion to not comment on uh, the allegations. It's incredible. He can't, he can't tell us whether or not he attended well, of course, he's going to break it. He's going to break yeah. it, isn't he? Because Sugo yeah. is going to report and then he's going to be... Whist and we're well, expecting Sugo's report today, I believe. <laughs> who, who, would want, who would want to um, predict? Um, yeah, there have been reports that it's today, reports it could be tomorrow. Um, we, we don't yet know. Uh, what we do know is that the, according to the process, the Prime Minister will get two hours... Uh, ahead of well, what we believe he'll get around two hours to see the report um, and then we will we will try it there and then it will be made available we just, we think it's going to be made available uh, on a link uh, which will be posted by the cabinet office on their website um, and could that be the end uh, or, or will there be a we'll wait for the police to conclude how much of what Sue Gray has given to the police will be in Sue Gray's report, if you see what I mean. Well, well from what we understand now, because the police didn't object yesterday, the whole thing, the, the Sue Gray report is going to be published in full. At one point yesterday lunchtime, it was looking like yes. Sue Gray, the legs of Sue Gray's report were going to be cut off because uh, Number 10 was saying effectively that the report was going to be split in two. The police were taking all of the bits that were, um, which would meet the, criminal, the, the threshold for a police investigation to look into, and then Sue Gray would be just left with the allegations of uh, events in Downing Street that didn't constitute uh, investigation mm. into whether the law had been broken at the time. Crikey. Curiouser and curiouser, said Alice. I pick up on a couple of things, though. They keep making these claims. Uh, let's pick on one, the fastest vaccine rollout, which he specifically said towards the end of that. Mm. And, and 
that can only now refer to the percentage of the population that has had one vaccine, as far as I can tell. To claim that you have had the fastest vaccine rollout, you would have to be able to demonstrate that you had a greater proportion of your population vaccinated. One vaccine. Which was true once, I think, uh, but it's not true now. Uh, I mean, the United Arab Emirates, Portugal, Malta, Spain, Canada, Australia, Italy and France all have a higher proportion of their population um, in receipt of, a, of at least one dose than the UK does. So I'm baffled as to why he continues to say that. Um, the other one that I will talk to you about after the news is this claim that a few of them have made about there being more people in work. And I think he changed that slightly today, did he? To more people on the payroll. Yeah. I, I know why he's done that. I think it was Nadine Dorries who said earlier in the week that there were more people in work. Why today would Boris Johnson claim that there were more people on the payroll when it's much more impressive if it's true, spoiler alert, it's much more impressive if it's true to claim that there are more people in work. I, I think I think I might have worked that one out. I shall share my workings with you after the very latest news headlines with Amelia Cox. Oh yeah, when it came to Keir's line of questions, um first thought was I'm not right sure where he's going with this because it didn't seem I thought I'm not sure what's the point here. All you're gonna get from all you have to do is wait for the Sue Gray investigation and not report and stuff like that. So yeah, he, he, I think he's probably right. He probably is getting his ducks in a row. I did pick on the bit where he asked, Will he be doing it in full? And I got the feeling he did say yeah he would. That was the one thing I did pick up straight away. So that like, ah interesting. I thought the way he uh Patronised Ian Blackwood was bang out about it. And yeah, the bit of fat shaming was, well, it just shows you what the sort of man he is. And the one thing I did notice and all, and I think a lot, of, quite a few people picked up on all, the way he just seemed to joke his way through it as though, nah, it doesn't matter. This is this man is just a, someone's just done it all his life. He just seems he's bluffed his way through out of most things and he thinks he can do it again. But, after they came the news, um, I thought that'll be it, you see. Then actually, Theo Wushup came back and he decided to go on some two things that uh, just seemed, uh, well, one came out of the blue from nowhere about the, well, I think you know what's coming. Uh, but then he centred on something else that is really interesting where could really come up in the future. And it's really, really interesting. 12.34 is the time. This is good news. Um, Jack Munro has succeeded in her mission described on this programme last week. She, they've just tweeted, delighted to be able to tell you that the ONS have just announced that they are going to be changing the way they collect and report on the cost of food prices and inflation to take into consideration a wider range of income levels and household circumstances. I think, given the remarkable circumstances in which we find ourselves, I may actually add a couple more contributions to the list of events, uh, behaviours that we consider to be most egregious from the uh, long history of Boris Johnson. Um, PMQs is, is behind us now, keeping an eye on events there, as, as predicted by Theo Usherwood. Fairly um, uh, straightforward exercise in Keir Starmer, reminding people of things that have happened, and Boris Johnson insisting that he has to wait until the report, until he can either confirm or deny things that have happened. Go on. We've got another example who's just uh, been just uh, dropped of the Prime Minister's spokesman not being truthful about what the Prime Minister said. Go on. Um, you'll remember last month um, the Prime Minister's spokesman insisted that neither the Prime Minister nor the Prime Minister's wife were involved uh, and that's were involved in the uh, evacuation of animals and pets as part of the Nazad charity from Afghanistan yes. as the country fell to the Tal Taliban at the end of August of last year and beginning of September. Uh, of last year, and the Prime Minister's spokesman denied that that had that the Prime Minister had stepped in to save those uh, animals and the vet veterinary workers. Um, of course, the accusation from a whistleblower was that that those the pets and their vet vets had been saved ahead of Afghan nationals mm. who had worked with British forces and whose lives were at risk from Taliban reprisals. We then, I then got hold of a letter from Trudy Harrison, which who was the Prime Minister's private 
parliamentary secretary at the time, private parliamentary secretary at the time, in which she intervened. And now we've got hold of, and it's just been published by the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, an internal email um, from somebody working on the Afghan nationals crisis desk to a private secretary in the Foreign Office saying, in light of the PM's decision earlier today uh, to evacuate the staff of the Nowzad animal charity, uh, parties redact, uh, the animal charity is uh, asking for agreement uh, to the entry of uh, staff, uh, all Afghan um, nationals. So that seems to be clear evidence from this email um, uh, that the Prime Minister did intervene. Right, and again, not for the first time, one wonders whether it's going to be overcome by or, or overlooked because of all the other evidence of um, something being rotten in the state of Downing Street. Um, I'll just pick up on one element from... Oh, no, before we do that, just looking at the list of parties, BBC's got a rather good... I was going to play a game on guessing, guessing what they are. I had a thought. Yeah. What about the wedding? What about when they got married? It seems unlikely that they were so, going to celebrate his birthday by breaking the rules and not perhaps flirt with a little bit of rule so, breaking when they got so wed. The wedding was in... Uh, the country was currently in step three of the roadmap out of lockdown restrictions. And you could only have 30 people, including the bride and groom, to a wedding. Um, there were two parts. The first part was in Westminster Cathedral. And then there was a party uh, in the garden of number 10, um, Downing Street. And... Under the rules, only 30 people, including the bride and groom, mm. could attend. You wouldn't be allowed to have dan dancing. Only the first dance was permitted um, at the time. Now, the, of course, Number 10 had said when this secret wedding um, uh, with uh, there's a bigger bash due later this year. Um, number 10 said at the time that it was uh, the, the rules were adhered to that only 30 people uh, attended. Um, but of course, so they wouldn't be allowed anything indoors at that time. Or would it all have to have been outdoors? I don't. If I remember, if I remember uh, correctly, it could. You could. You. It had to be. I'd, I'd need to check that detail. Okay. But it was. It was thirty. The, 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 the limit. Is the the limit. If there were more the than thirty the, people there, then they are, yeah. they would be banked. And it's rights. guests. And it's and it's guests. I, well, I don't. And know I don't know. Mate, but I wouldn't be massively surprised if there were more my than DMs, thirty people. My DMs there. are open. So are you serious? If if people have got evidence yeah, of that, yeah. people with you know Rachel Johnson is is his sister. And she yes. presents on LBC. You are, well, you, perhaps you could give her a call, ask her how many people were at the wedding. Or maybe just tune in on Saturday and she might drop that, that, that um, nugget of information herself. Uh, Theo is being serious, I can tell by his face. If, if you do have any uh, insights or evidence of the guests' numbers for Boris Johnson's wedding to his latest wife, then um, Theo Usherwood's direct messages on Twitter are open. And yeah, I must admit, I'd forgotten about the wedding. It's just hard to keep up in it. James O'Brien, he was doing uh, on his show, he was asking people to ring in and asking them, what do you think is the most egregious thing he's done? What is the one thing that's really grinded your gears? And there were so many people, he, there was so much stuff, even I'd forgotten about, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I'd forgotten about that. And that when he brought up the wedding, you just think, yeah, that, what's the betting? That there'll be some photograph of where they've broken the law again and you can bank on it because he's the man's lazy he's just a hooray henry and he just he just seems to think that well like his, his days at eton his head of year whatever they call him said he thinks the the rules that bind us are, he do not apply to him so you can bet your bottom dollar that don't be surprised if there's a picture coming out soon but anyway, what do you guys think? <laughs> right, I shall leave the video here until the next time. Take care.